Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to episode 4 of the Austro-Hungarian campaign. I have the Tiger, Sava, and Shamos, which are reinforcing, slash, uh, well, reacting to a transport that's being attacked, with Suprema, the Armando Diaz, and the Nibio. I'm gonna take these guys out soon, before I start losing transports. Now, in the research department, we have made some progress. I have been able to get a bigger torpedo. I have been able to get a bigger cruiser hull. It's just going to take me some time to actually get those improvements in the field. Because I'll need to overhaul some of my ships, modernize them, and make sure that they actually use those improvements. Much like, for example, my heavy cruisers are still using pretty old... What was it? Nickel steel? Uh... I got the 38% quality bonus anyway. I can definitely improve that. What I cannot improve is my chances of keeping this convoy alive. Because my light cruiser is only doing 21 knots and still has to travel 10 and a half kilometers. And the transports... Oh, these guys are basically dead. There is really not a lot that I can do about it. I need to keep 50% of them alive. I hope I can get here fast enough to either present myself as a target or shoot the attackers and eliminate them. I'm not sure if that'll work. The only weapon that I really have against the enemy heavy cruisers is my one heavy cruiser with torpedoes. Because that's probably the most likely thing that will kill these. Their light cruisers... Oh, sorry, it's one heavy cruiser and two lights. Their light cruisers are torpedo threats, torpedo hazards will need to be dealt with as such. Range, 8 point, sorry, 9.8 kilometers, 9.6. Run. What? Is that a transport shooting back? Yes. Interesting. Transports are shooting back at the target. At the Suprema. Stor, Funchberg, Alligator, Dukla, Ansfelden, they're all armed. <laughs> Partial pen on the light cruiser. I love it. Okay. We have an option here. We have a chance. So long as the heavy cruiser doesn't flat out ram the alligator. Or kill it with a bunch of four inchers. Which are going to get increasingly accurate. With every hundred meters that the thing closes the distance. Yeah, I think this is going to be a bit of a sacrificial transport. How close are you going to get? No. Yes. Yep. It's one of these. Suprema wants to sink the alligator at all cost, including at grave cost to the al to the Suprema itself. And she'll do it. But she took 13% structural damage and she has three floodings going on. Dummy. That was so unnecessary. And that transport was effectively dead in the water. I'm not sure how they were able to ram that. Anyway, the Suprema is struggling with four flooded compartments. Oh, you dummy. Okay, fine. Uh, can we pen that? No. Absolutely not. Nor the light cruiser. At least not at this range. Oh, I need the Tiger to get into range. I need the torpedoes. What other stupid things are you going to do? They managed to completely fix the flooding in the bows. Wow, you almost ran into the sinking alligator as well. With your few bulkheads, that's extremely risky. Let's see, we are 2-8. These 4-inch guns, I could... Well, I'm having trouble penning their turrets. Too heavily armored. Maybe the 7-incher from the heavy cruiser can do it? Yeah, the 7-incher from the heavy cruiser can do it. But fires very slowly. My biggest hope right now is that some of these transports are going to start picking the light cruisers as their targets. Because that is far more easy to pen 
than the heavy cruiser. The 4-inch gun against the heavy cruiser basically has no chance. Especially not at that angle. But against the light cruiser, poorly armored and especially thin-skinned light cruiser, you definitely stand a chance. So if they just prioritize the target a little better, they might be able to get away with it. Now my crew is trained. But so is theirs. Theirs is, well, not that trained. Their, tra their crew is green. Uh oh. Come on. Sava and Seamus have made their way to the light cruiser. And they are starting to rip it up with four inch guns. Oh, I really don't need the Nibio lobbing a torpedo at me. Focus this cruiser. You, we're gonna dance with the Suprema. She's heavily flooded. And yes, I'm presenting enough of a target, enough of a threat, to aggro the Nibio and the Armando. Meaning that they're no longer targeting my transports, and I have managed to keep more than enough of those alive. Now let's uh, make sure the Suprema gets who is actually the Suprema here. Gonna have to do a little bit of dodging of friendlies. Right over to port. We're gonna slow down. Slow down. You could take out that, ideally before it launches a torpedo. Torpedo hit against the Suprema. Second torpedo also hit against the Suprema. That barely, barely got dodged. Armando Diaz is dead in the water. Suprema is dead, period. And it looks like the Nibby. Really? Point 0.8. Fine. Be like that. I really wasn't expecting to be able to save this convoy. I thought, yeah, they're going to rip this apart. But somehow they managed to muck it up. Why are we struggling with this light cruiser? Sorry, heavy cruiser. What is that about? Secondaries on that. Whoa! You're not supposed to... <laughs> yeah, fuck you. <laughs> You're not supposed to shoot torpedoes back at me. Oh, man. These 1890 campaigns, they're fun because they are so hilariously inaccurate. <laughs> you're always fighting point-blank range, 400 meters, 300 meters, and you're still struggling to deal any kind of damage. It's either you won't hit or you won't pen. Boom. Could you finally sink? No? <laughs> Dude. Yeah, give each other a kiss and move on. Thank you. Good thing that ramming a friendly does not actually cause any damage. Good grief, load the high explosive, everyone, and finish it off. It's just a heavy cruiser. 16% buoyancy. Their buoyancy keeps dropping to... Oh, sorry, 60% structural. Their buoyancy keeps dropping to 0.8. And then right back to 1%. one percent 0.8. 14% structural. Hit, damn it. Partial pen. Oh, we're going to have to cook these Italians. Otherwise, I'll just not be able to kill them. There you go. Finally, it decided to sink. Oh, that took me way longer than I'd hoped. But the more important thing is the job got done. I got a lot of victory points and I did lose one transport. So that gave them a couple of victory points as well. But not nearly as many as I got. 8,700 versus 2,400. Nevertheless, their fleet is still 81 ships. Now, my 36 additional, or my 
I don't know, 20 additional transports, no, torpedo boats, have now decided to join this fight. So let's set them all into motion. Uh, you guys are going to go for a very aggressive roll, invade. We also got a group here. The thing is, I cannot really go after the French. That sucks. The French got a light cruiser there, they got a light cruiser there, but if I engage them, I will lose points if I lose a ship. I really do not want to lose a ship. How badly can we block off the port of Ancona here? Why do you not want to move? Move ships there. Thank you. All of you. There. Okay, I still get 8.9 million a month. Research. Where can I bit get bigger hulls? New hull available. Battleship 1. I think that would be a good idea. It's probably going to take me a while. But that's okay. Hull construction reduces ship construction time. No, this is still going to take a long time. All of this is work in progress, so no point. Turret mechanisms could also be bonus. Okay, let's continue. We've been fighting for about a year. And I have acquired quite a few kills. But not enough. I need to do more. Destination, Eastern Mediterranean. I really don't like you there. There we go. Plus 5% turret traverse speed. That's quite a lot in this era. Carry on. 131 million. The Italians, with their nine battleships at this point, probably have a massive amount of power projection, and I'm not sure why I'm not getting blockaded. I think I should be getting blockaded, but it seems like they're keeping all their battleships bottled up. Hmm. So we just continue to be the underdog, despite them having such a large group. This convoy mission is not looking good. Capitana, Paolo Emilio against two light cruisers. That's not going to work out. Sometimes I really don't understand the Italians. They keep challenging me to cruiser duels. It's the Sava against the Bartolomeo Colleoni. Uh, I have the weight advantage, but they have torpedoes. This is not the first time it's happened. And these things tend to be over pretty quick. Because the Italians with one light cruiser are just not capable enough. I mean, this light cruiser of mine is designed to take on torpedo boats. But it does just as well against light cruisers. The Italians simply don't have the, the crew training sometimes, or the gunpower, or the reload, or I don't know what it is, but they're just mostly terribly inaccurate. And yes, they carry torpedoes. They have that advantage. But overall, these battles are pretty one-sided. So what I think is going to happen with this campaign, the way that I see it now, is that it could be a pretty long one. That could actually make for a very interesting event, because then tech really starts to be an advantage. So my plan for now is to keep taking these duels and slowly chip away at the Italian Navy, while I keep teching up, building bigger shipyards, eventually research battleships and ideally rangefinders, so that I can start fueling my battleships and hitting stuff. Hitting stuff in general would be such a nice progress. Um, it will require, if I want to take out the Italians altogether, it will require that I actually am able to get a conflict with the Italian battleships. And that is something that's not necessarily guaranteed. Because the Italian battleships, they're just nowhere to be seen. They're port queens. They don't leave dock at all. So in the meanwhile, I might as well go after their allies. So as the Sava is engaging the Bartolomeo Colleoni, I have several other ships moving towards the western Mediterranean to both protect my interests there a bit more and also see what they can find. Because there must be British shipping out there. And if I can eliminate the British, I might very well be able to take the Italians down with them. Because the way that this campaign works is if one party, so for example the British, lose the war, the Italians automatically also lose the war. I'm not really sure what the Germans are up to. 
still need to check that because they are my ally. But I'm not sure if they're actually fielding any ships or if they're anything doing anything useful. Bartolomeo, look at this. I lost 2% of structural integrity. The Bartolomeo lost 20% and it's already half flooded. This just keeps up. We're going to load the AP and just finish this thing by flooding it all together. Their torpedo attack, as you saw, was fairly easily dodged. Doesn't really matter. There you go. There goes your third engine. Overpan. Ship's dead in the water. Turning doesn't help. And you're done. So yeah, these battles... There we go. That was 12 minutes. These battles keep happening. I'm not sure what the Italian plan is. But chipping away at my light cruisers like this... It's not really the right way to go. Because I got... 410 victory points, they got one. Right. We shall move on and see what else we can find. One torpedo boat against a torpedo boat. Wow, I'm, <laughs> I'm protecting 20 transports. Okay. Um, yeah, one torpedo boat can wreak quite a lot of havoc with the rest of my fleet. Enemy southwest. How far? Four clicks. Okay, so my torpedo boat is pretty close. And it's one of those newer torpedo boats. This is the uh, Exa T9, which has a couple of four inch guns, three inch guns, and single torpedo launcher. So, against the target of another torpedo boat is actually quite a good choice. The one with the two inchers would have been even better, but this will have to do. I'm firing heavy shells. I suppose a high explosive is more than enough to deal with that target, because I think armor piercing is going to go in one side and right out the other. Hello, there you are. Accuracy already pretty good, actually. Regular crew. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive. For a ship that's brand new. Or a boat, I suppose I should say, since it's a torpedo boat. <laughs> And this thing took one look at my torpedo boat and went, nah. <laughs> nah, I'm not facing that. Four inch gun, couple of threes. This is going to be an interesting dance. What is that accuracy? I said the accuracy was pretty good, but you're leading your shots way too much. Go on. I want the torpedo boat there to launch its torpedoes at me while I'm in a turn. Come on. There. <gasps> no, I'm fine. <sighs> okay. My turn. Chasing you. Sadly, my four-inch gun has all sorts of different plans rather than to hit the target. There we go. Flooding. Rudder damaged. Three-inch guns don't quite have the angle to fire. There, overpen. Try again. Miss. Come on. Flooding. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Many bulkheads. I have many bulkheads as well. Flooding on my ship. Slow it down. It has no torpedoes left. Sadly, I'm flooding a bit too much. I cannot keep up. Am I going to die? Any bulk is. Oh, this is not looking good. <laughs> okay. Uh, no. That did not go the way that I expected. 205 victory points for them. I'm not sure if they actually took out my convoy with that as well, but I'm hoping they did not. Because otherwise they would have had a lot more victory points. Nope. Didn't get the convoy. Good. 91? Seriously, every time I look at this number, it goes up. I should just stop looking at it. Now, sadly, ignoring a mission has dire consequences now. Because I lost 20 transports because of a ignored mission. I think that that ignored mission was actually the one where I had the torpedo boat that just lost. But this caused me to lose 20 transports, and with that, a large portion of my transport capacity. I'm down to 52%.
they took out so many ships. So I'm going to have to try and repay the favor. Uh, we're going to take the light cruiser Shamos and the heavy cruiser Tiger against a bunch of their torpedo boats and try and survive that. And also we got a task force here, which is against the Brits. Yeah, we should be able to win that, but this one first. Let's have a go. If they attack as a swarm, I'm going to be in trouble, but it will at least make for very interesting fighting. Okay, you're going to slow down to half speed. Make yourself as maneuverable as possible. Load nothing but high explosive. Prepare to take aim at these targets. Smoke up. Tiger should be able to take out the lead torpedo boat here. And just sail somewhat perpendicular. Or sorry, parallel. Perpendicular is angular. To take out the Canopo. Before she eliminates you. That is still range finding, I hope. Oh, you're too close! Turning circle is extremely good on these light cruisers, thankfully. Centauro is flooding. We're gonna have to probably do a donut, otherwise, I'm in trouble. Arietti has launched torps, Balestra. Yeah, we'll dodge everything. Target the Astore. Tiger, your accuracy leaves a lot to be desired for a veteran crew. <sighs> I really need to prioritize range findings. Range finders. Because I'm just not hitting anything. Target the Canopo. Neither of these are launching torpedoes at the moment. I should have an opportunity here to take out this guy. He might come at me with torpedoes, but I can do the same thing. Might as well use him. His turning circle at full speed is far worse than mine. Lord, hit the target. Arietti has taken some damage. Oh, you're all clumped up. Pretty bad news for you, because that means I can hit... Well, I can hit all of you very easily. If I accidentally miss the Ariati, I hit the Centauro behind it and potentially the Balestra. So that's good. Tiger's doing some damage here. Come on, we need to sink these. Sadly, tomorrow the Italians are probably going to have six new ones. So, taking out this one guy probably isn't helping that much. I should have had that at HE, not AP. I think AP's really not doing much. Yeah, see? I was just getting over pens. Now I'm getting massive amounts of damage. That's more like it. Tiger, take out the Canopo. Torpedo in the water. Ooh. That's too late. I'm gonna get hit. No! Yes. Shit. Full slow. Let's see if I can survive that flooding. So I've taken out one of them. This guy's heavily damaged. This one's perfectly fine. The Astore is perfectly fine. Balestra is still sailing around like nothing's happening. She is awfully slow. Let's switch targets. We might be able to damage that thing before it runs off. We still have two torpedoes, but I'm just outside of torpedo range. There you go. Good pen hit. Standard bulkheads, flooding. Come on, take it out. You can do it. Rude. You okay there, Seamus? I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Canopo. Good. Torpedo missed. Where's the other guy? Oh, there you are. Yeah, Labarda. Holding at range. Can you really damage my cruiser? Not very well. Excellent. Ooh. Ammo detonation, the whole bow is gone. 
Is that enough to sink her? No, but it's going to cause her quite a bit of grief. Turn away before she comes in for the kill. Sentaro is in trouble. Balestra is still sailing around. I need to target more battleships. How do I, how do I force a fight with a battleship? Not sure. Let me just torpedo this guy and put it out of its misery. Torpedo away. Want to give them something else to worry about. Oh, and me. And hit. Dead. Good. Okay. On to the next. A bit concerned about the light cruiser, but she should be surviving this fight. The tiger is absolutely fine. It's just that these guys are too fast. I should have had more of those new torpedo boats out here. Those um, hunters. The ones with the two inchers. Because they would have made very quick work out of these things. This is going to take me a while. A little while later, I have decided to let the Balestra survive the encounter to tell the tale of the Tiger and the Shamos, which were able to take out this many torpedo boats without really breaking a sweat. Yes, this thing was lightly damaged, but otherwise she's perfectly fine. So there's another 656 victory points for me. Um, the task force battle here is against the British. No, I'm going to pass on that. How is my research coming along? Two months until hull strengthening, which is going to allow me the battleship three. That's beautiful. I just need a bigger shipyard. How big does my shipyard need to be in order to get a battleship? I don't know. Oh, 8,000 tons. Hold on. I should be able to get that, right? If I just say I want to cancel that build, yes. And now we're going to boost it again. 8,268 tons. That means I now have battleships. There we go. The battleship won. It's not going to be a very good battleship, but it's going to project more power than what I have had so far. And the battleship 3 is probably even bigger than what this thing is going to be. So I'm not that likely to really make a lot of use of it. The objective of these things uh, project as much power as possible. So, power projection works with big guns. That's why I'm going with the biggest guns that I can get. Range is not important for this ship. Uh, let's go with the nickel steel or bet armor. A citadel would be nice to have. Enhanced loading. Turrets cannot turn faster. Standard ratio. Gun cotton. More shell damage. I like more shell damage. As for the rest. Heavy shells, maybe light shells. Light shells are generally faster. 642 on HE, still 642. It doesn't matter yet. That's probably in a later era. Now, engine efficiency, 100%. Very good. Can I do that with one? No. Okay. Four weight offsets a bit high. Sadly, not too much that I can do to fix that beyond using secondary guns. Probably casemates. And I might also need torpedo launchers on this ship, otherwise you just don't hit anything. Or well, you might hit it, but you won't actually do damage against it. Range 3.1. That's good enough against a torpedo boat. Considering that torpedo boats are gonna have to get extremely close in order to be effective. Can I put those What? I cannot put those back there. But you can put a three incher back there? That's weird. Normally it's easy to put the bigger or the, the smaller gun in a place than it is the bigger gun. Okay. Four weight offset, one percent should be good. Uh belt armor. I think that's a bit much. Superstructure armor would be nice to have. Half an inch is enough to stop at least some shells. Two inch shells cease to be effective at that range anyway. 4 inch shells, and this is plus 43%, so effectively I got about 0.7. Uh, 
Uh, might stop a four incher on a good day at good range. Okay. So that is the Suplingenberg class of battleship. 4.7 million a pop. And let's see. Let's build a bunch of those. How much is that? I've got 3.4 million that I'm still getting. Good. We're going to crank out five of those. Um, no, more actually. Eight battleships. It's going to put me on par with the Italians. It's going to take me 13 months. And in that time, I can also continuously build out my shipyard. All right. I think that concludes this episode. More to come. Hopefully not against the French and potentially pissing off some of the British here, but I might do that off camera. All right, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for more videos.